All right, so let's get straight to it. Let's talk about Steve Mnuchin and his stimulus proposal that came out. So we talked on Monday's episode about the $908 billion stimulus proposal that was put out by a bipartisan group of congressional leaders, right? And so now we have to the scene, it's already Wednesday, right? Two days later, and we have another kind of proposal put to the scene. And this proposal, again, stems from the White House and Steve Mnuchin. So this proposal, surprisingly, has uh, a few things that might be of surprise to a lot of people. Um, But it's surprising in a very calculated way, as we'll talk about here in just a second. So, so, okay, let's, let's, I'm not going to break down like everything, all the nitty gritty related to this proposal, but I do want to say that one of the main differences between this proposal from Steve Mnuchin uh, compared to the proposal that we saw from the bipartisan group of uh, congressional men and women is the fact that this proposal that has been put forth by Steve Mnuchin has a stimulus check in it. If you listen to Monday's episode, um, you were made aware, and you probably heard from other sources too, that that bipartisan group that put together a proposal for a stimulus package, they did not include a stimulus check to any of your average everyday Americans, right? They pretty much just sought out to help states, local governments, businesses, and then the unemployed. But again, this proposal by Steve Mnuchin does have a stimulus check in it. Now, if you're expecting me to say that that stimulus check is a $1,200 check, you're not going to hear me say that because that's not the stimulus check that is offered in this proposal. The stimulus check that Steve Mnuchin and the White House want to give to the American people is half of what you're probably expecting. Yes, you heard me right. It is half of $1,200, which is $600. So this proposal by Steve Mnuchin does have a $600 stimulus check in it that would be $600 per person. Um, Assumedly, most likely the... uh, same batch of people who were eligible for that last $1,200 check. Uh, and, and it does offer also $600 for children. Okay, now here's the deal. N- not like dependents, maybe like an elderly person that you're taking care of or a dependent an adult child. For the, In those cases, you won't see a, a $600 check for that dependent. The only dependent under this proposal that you would see a $600 check for is your child who is a child, uh, a child who is not of legal age, okay? And so that's the main difference that we're seeing from this other proposal, uh, from the bipartisan proposal. Are there other differences? Yes. The other main one uh, is the fact that uh, on Monday's episode, I clarified some kind of confusion regarding what would happen with the unemployed under the bipartisan proposal. With that bipartisan proposal, uh, it was clarified on Monday that there would be uh, an extension of uh, unemployment until March, the end of March. And on top of that, the unemployed would see $300 per week in addition to their already, you know, weekly, the payments that they receive weekly already. This proposal that comes from Steve Mnuchin, It does, in fact, extend the length of unemployment for the PUA gig worker types. It extends it for three months for those who are under with kind of those uh, regular unemployment claims, not the PUA people. They would get it for four months. But the other main difference here between the bipartisan bill and Steve Mnuchin's bill is the fact that Steve Mnuchin removes that extra payment that the unemployed people get. So the bipartisan bill offered $300 on top of what unemployed people are already getting. This bill from Steve Mnuchin offers nothing. So if you get $50 a week in unemployment, $200 a week in unemployment, that's all you get. You do get an extension of time, but you don't get that extension of actual money. Okay, so those are the main differences between the two. Um, quite honestly, if you ask me why in the world, 
this proposal was put forth by Steve Mnuchin. I honestly believe that it was in response to outrage that a lot of people were demonstrating and, and, and expressing um, in response to the lack of the bipartisan bill containing stimulus checks for American people. So again, I think this was a, a direct and immediate and swift response to people saying, yo, Americans need stimulus checks. This is why if you ask Brittany, why Steve Mnuchin made this proposal that he did. If you also ask me, I will tell you that it was very much a strategic move. Very, in, in pre-election, Nancy Pelosi was the person who was making a lot of strategic moves and playing her cards right. She's still making a few moves, but I would say the ball has gone to the other court now. At this point, the strategic moves are coming from the other side. Why in the world am I calling this, this proposal from Steve Mnuchin, a strategic move? Well, think about it. <clears throat> On one hand, you have the bipartisan bill, which does not give stimulus checks, but it really helps the unemployed. Like really, it helps them not just in terms of time, but in terms of the actual resources that they'll receive. So you have that on one hand with the bipartisan bill, but it doesn't really help those who are not receiving unemployment benefits. On the other hand, from that same party, from essentially the same group of people, they're offering you a competing bill, a competing bill that helps not those same group of people. Unemployed people, they're helped a little bit, but not necessarily to the same extent. But they receive a lot less help with this different with this second proposal. So essentially what the Republicans have done by by means of both that bipartisan group and their participation in it and by means of Steve Mnuchin, they have now put the Democrats, specifically Nancy Pelosi, in a position where she has to choose. She's going to make somebody unhappy in either case. You go with the bipartisan bill, regular regular Americans who do happen to be employed or who don't qualify for unemployment in either case are going to be unhappy because they are not going to receive a stimulus check. If you go with Steve Mnuchin's option, you're going to make the unemployed people unhappy because sure, they'll get three or four months worth of unemployment, but it's going to be at their same level. And for a lot of people, the base amount of unemployment benefits that they receive is literally not even enough probably to go and actively look for another job when you consider paying for a phone, paying for the internet, paying for gas, if you're going to interviews, right? Like if you consider all of that, do you even really have enough to pay your bills? So in either case, somebody is going to be unhappy. And who's the person just just who's the person when you kind of just glance at the entire situation who is put in the position where they have to make a choice between the two groups? That's Nancy Pelosi. Again, very strategic move. Now, while it does appear to be a very strategic move, again, if you ask me, while the Republicans might be looking at the situation and might be saying, oh, we got her now. She's, you know, she's, we're going to increase her dissatisfaction numbers, her, you know, we're going to increase the likely, the, the, the number of people who were unhappy with Nancy because she's going to make somebody mad in this situation, right? And then that's ultimately going to affect Democrats and that can ultimately probably help us in Georgia. And right, yes, you can go down that rabbit hole. Again, strategic move. I will give it to you. I'll give credit where it is due. But if you ask me, it's not really that hard of a choice. What did I say in the last episode? In the last episode, I said that I would, well, actually, no, on last week, I think it was last week, I, I don't know, at some point, <laughs> I made the comment that I would rather see 
the unemployment extended than given that extra boost, right? So you might think that that would lead me to say, well, then the best choice here is to go with the stimulus checks. No, not in this case. Why not? Be because when it comes to the bipartisan proposal, you get the two for one deal. You get the extension of time and you get that extra money. From the time when you go back to before July 30th, the data has shown us that there is immense positive impact on not just the broader economy, but the economy of individual Americans. When you look at the impact that that extra $600 per week had on their lives and not just a one time $600 payment, a recurring $600 per week payment that had the data shows us that that was effective, right? So there is the case to be made that, okay, hey, we need to provide extra benefit because you can also look at the data since then, the data, especially if you take away the weeks that people receive that LWA, the Lost Wages Assistance Program payments, that thing. Um, if, you, if you exclude those weeks and you look at the weeks where people solely received just base unemployment and no extra monetary assistance from the federal government, our economy did not fare too well. And having that happen week after week after week after week after week is super detrimental to our economy. So for that reason, we cannot afford to be without having the unemployed have that extra payment. Whether it's $300, that's okay. It would be better if they could have $600, but if you're willing to give them an extra $300, we'll take it because the data shows us that it helps not just them, but the economy. And again, in addition to that extra payment, the bipartisan bill, it extends the amount of time that people get the unemployment. So if you ask me again, it's a no brainer. If it's between Steve Mnuchin's bill, which provides a stimulus check, and if it's between the bipartisan bill, which offers no stimulus check, but extends unemployment and gives a boost, hands down all day, go with that bipartisan's bill. If you ask me also, what does it mean if we see her go towards uh, something more in line with Steve Mnuchin's proposal? It goes to show you that she believes genuinely that she cannot get sufficient stimulus after Joe Biden is in office. Because think about it. If you really believe that you can get sufficient stimulus once your man is in office, you're willing to go for the most effective thing in this moment, even if a group of people are unhappy with you because you know something better is coming later. I get it. I'm all for giving a stimulus check to all Americans. I'm all for it. But the data has shown us that a one-time kind of bloop in people receiving assistance is not as effective as kind of a continuous kind of trickle drip from those extra benefits from the federal government for the unemployed. Are some people going to not like me saying this? Absolutely. But in the words of COVID in chief, it is what it is. In this moment, in either case, somebody's going to be unhappy. Who is it going to be? Then you have to make the case. Here's something else that Democrats also need to think about that Nancy needs to think about. If you are willing to go towards Steve Mnuchin's bill and give up those extra benefits for the unemployed. How likely do you think it is that you're going to get it back?
not very likely. You know how I know that? I talked to you already about how Democrats really have to play their cards right and not let the uh, be these programs expire specifically like that PUA program. Because if you do, a lot of people are going to disappear off the rolls and appears that they got jobs. And then the data, as we currently allow it to be spun, is going to appear as if a lot of people just magically just got jobs. And if we provide stimulus that removes that extra money, but continues us towards the cliff of that happening, you can absolutely forget any chance in hell that Republicans will allow if there does happen to be, which more likely, most likely there won't be again, because if we see her go towards this type of bill, we can utterly believe that she does not believe that there is going to be uh, the likelihood of actually getting more stimulus under President Joe Biden, right? But you can absolutely forget even if you do see some sort of stimulus package affecting the unemployed under Joe Biden, you can absolutely forget them agreeing to give some sort of a bonus payment. Again, ask me, it is not that hard. It's not that hard and it's very, very clear. It's not a hard choice between the two. If anybody is listening to me, little old Brittany, who has no say in what happens in these congressional negotiations around economic stimulus, please hear me out. Someone's going to be mad at you regardless. What? Wow, wow, wow. wow. We've already seen a specific, not all, but we've already seen a specific group of Republicans over the last four years try to pit Americans against Americans in various capacities, whether it's be by race or namely by race, right? But what we're seeing here yet again, this strategic move is yet another example of a specific group of Republicans trying to do that exact same thing. Tell me, somebody please tell me that that is not disheartening, that that is not alarming, that that is not disgraceful, that that is not not American. What in the heck is going on here at a time when we need to be drawing together, at a time when we should be coming together to figure out a solution? Here we are, yet again, with groups trying to pit groups against each other. That's not okay. That is not okay. And it is not something that should be overlooked. I just just want to state that it should not be overlooked. (laughs) So again, there is the case, as I've just put it, to opt for the bipartisan bill over Steve Mnuchin's bill because it does in fact extend the benefits in a way that Steve Mnuchin's bill does not in a way that is more consistent for the economy. And right now, our economy needs consistency. Americans need consistency. That is not something that they've had over the course of this pandemic, and it is something that they deserve. If you ask me as well, when when I consider this strategic move that was done, It was a way of giving more, but not giving all. Why was why was it a way of giving more? The actual one of the things I didn't mention to this point was the actual bottom line number for this bill. For the bipartisan bill, that bottom line number was like 906, 908 billion dollars, something like that. One of the two. For this bill, the bottom line number, as surprised as you might be was more than that. It was $916 billion. So if you just look at the top line number, it appears as if concessions were made. It appears as if 
we're willing to give more. It appears as if, see, we really want to help. Just how I said this bill from Steve Mnuchin was in response to an outcry of not just congressional leaders, but Americans in general saying, hey, we need help. We need stimulus checks. This was also a response from them, from the White House, from Steve Mnuchin, from Mitch McConnell. This was their response of, see, I'm trying to help you. But what you have to do, what you have to educate those around you to do is to look at the specifics. If you just look and you just hear, well, Mitch McConnell is now willing to give 916. Boy, what did I tell you on Monday? What did I propose the, the Democrats do on Monday? They literally, the Republicans literally took a play from the book that I told Democrats to do on Monday. Monday, I talked about Mitch McConnell and how he's not willing to do anything. So what did I say Democrats needed to do? I said, give Mitch McConnell everything he wants but give it to him at a lesser price for a shorter amount of time. What are Republicans now doing? Giving Democrats two options of everything they want at a higher price. Optics. Tactics. Strategy. They're giving more. They're appearing to give more. But even while they're appearing to give more, they're really not truly giving the other party what they want. They're not giving all. Give more, but not give all. And you, you still have some Democrats out there who are pressing for a stimulus that includes $1,200 direct payments to Americans. And you have people like Senator Bernie Sanders who were saying, look, I'm not supporting anything that does not include $1,200 direct payments to Americans. And so not only are those Democrats, such as Bernie Sanders, they're not, they're not, well, those independent Democrats, whatever they want to call themselves this week, not only are they saying, look, I don't support this Steve Mnuchin bill, I also don't support this bipartisan bill. To them, I will quickly say this. You were part of the problem in this moment. In this moment, while it would be ideal to have a situation where we could have both stimulus checks and assistance for the unemployed, that is not the situation in which we currently find ourselves. We find ourselves with leadership on the Republican side in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, who will not, Mitch will not compitch. Okay, again, Mitch will not capitch. And because Mitch will not capitch, we have to play, unfortunately for now, on his playground. His playground does not, nor will it ever, include $1,200 direct payments. A lot of it because of the optics that he doesn't want to appear to capitch to Nancy. But again, Mitch will not capitch. So keeping that in mind, I think you are doing a disservice, maybe not... <clears throat> to the same extent as the other side in time in terms of I don't think these Democrats or these independents or whoever they want to call themselves I don't think that they're trying to be divisive like you're getting from the other side that, that are that's like literally trying I don't think they're actively trying to be divisive but I think that they don't realize that they are being divisive they're being divisive and they're not living in reality in this moment, you are not going to get $1,200 checks. And if you do think that a single $1,200 check has more weight on the economy than current recurrent unemployment payments at a boosted amount, you don't understand. You have not looked at the numbers. The numbers, the data has borne out that these recurring payments, these boosted recurring payments, have more of an impact on our economy than a one-time single payment. Now, if you truly do not believe to these people, I will say one last thing before I move on. If you are truly one of these Democrats or independents who say, yo, we have to have this $1,200 check right now, 
I really encourage you to ask yourself if you really believe that you were likely to see additional stimulus under President Joe Biden. Because if you do, as much as I know people really need it, withholding everything from everybody, unemployed included, you're doing a disservice. And if you really, truly do not believe that you can get any stimulus after Joe Biden, then yes, I encourage you to keep fighting for $1,200 since you think this is the best we can do. But now it's not the time to press for those $1,200 checks. I would like one. I really would. You know, I need one. But now it's not the time. I want to close with this. I've seen a few reports around what I am calling. <laughs> here's here's yet again. Let me let me say this real quick. Uh, yet again, pay attention to the words people decide to use. This will let you know where they fall on issues. Right, for the most part, we have heard the phrase corporate liability. But I really think that we should be calling it corporate protections. Are they the same thing? Yes. But again, the words people decide to use really let you know where they fall on the issue. When we look at these corporate protections, when we look at corporate immunity, when we look at removing the responsibility that corporations have to their workers, to society at large, to people within their communities, when we remove that responsibility from corporations, we have a problem. And the problem that we have right now that I'm seeing, that I've seen noted, is that people are saying that part of the disagreements that they're having right now with stimulus negotiations has to do with removing corporate responsibility for any liability they have regarded to co uh, related to COVID-19 economic stimulus, uh, related to COVID-19. And the pr I want to make this very clear because they're not really talking about what the issue is here. Again, and it speaks to who they actually support on this issue. The issue is not that the Democrats don't want to give it. At a certain point in time, Democrats did not want to give corporate immunity. They did not want to remove the corporate responsibility when it comes to COVID-19. That is still in play. The problem that we are currently having is the length of time that people think that people, that corporations should be immune from any responsibility that they have related to COVID-19, whether it's protecting customers, protecting students, protecting employees. Republicans are proposing that we remove corporate responsibility to protect employees, the uh, patients, so on and so forth for five years. They do not want corporations to be responsible for five years. Democrats, they have gone from a position, a majority, not all, a majority have gone from a position of, look, corporations have to be held responsible to, okay, we're, well, we're in a negotiation. We'll give them six months of not having to be responsible for the damages they cause. This is the difference, and I want you to understand that because some people are trying to frame this as a Democrats are still saying, no, you know, we can't have corporate liability protections. No, 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 that's not what's going on. The problem is that Republicans want corporations to not have any responsibility for five years. And Democrats say, well, look, we'll let you slide for six months, after six months, you are responsible. That's enough time for you to get PPE. That's enough time for you to get educated on this issue. But after that, you are responsible for damages you cause related to COVID-19, right? So this is what it is regarded to, regarding the current state of negotiations as of the time that I am recording this podcast.